Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Salina Invitational, presented by Wabash Mutual Telephone, proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. We are excited to be here at Salina High School today on a very chilly and windy day, and we are looking forward to some great running. Already happened today, the 4x800 relays, Ottawa, Glandorf, boys and girls both winning those in the 100 hurdles. It was Jackson of New Haven, the winner for the girls, in the boys, John Lutz of Salina in the 100 dash. Emma Macon of Elida is the winner, and for the boys, Anthony Wilder of Defiance. Time now for event seven. This is the girls' 4 by 200 meter relay. You're watching today's Salina Invitational, presented by Wabash Mutual Telephone, proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. I'm Jennifer Beck, alongside Nate Garlock. This is heat two of two in the girls' 4 by 200 meter relay. In lane one, it's Defiance with Samantha Hohenberger. Lane two, Ottawa Glandorf B with Lainey Hedrick. Lane three, Ottawa Glendorf A with Alexa Fortman leading off. Lane 4, Salina A, Ellie Hitchcock. And Lane 5, Ottawa Glendorf C with Delaney Dooling. And they are off and they are going, Nate. Yeah, you know, this 4 by 2 it's all going to come down to these handoffs. You know, you don't always have to have the four fastest uh, girls on the track, but it's all going to come down to what you do inside that zone. So we'll see as we approach this first one here at the end of this first 200 how they get these handoffs. It does appear that Alexa Fortman, that standout runner, is your leader right now. Of course, right back straight away, big wind today uh, that these racers are against. Yeah, it's going to have to come down to your running form. You know, you don't want to be running straight up. You know, we're having gusts up to 50 miles an hour today. So as those come through, even with the sustained winds into the 20s, that can really affect how you run. So you got to make sure you're bent over, head down, looking down at the track, really trying to cut that wind. Appears to be Ottawa Glandorf versus Ottawa Glandorf as we get ready for the third handoff here. Ottawa Glandorf looks like they're going to have another strong team. Obviously still early in the season. Everybody just kind of trying to figure out still where, what they have, where everybody belongs. But Ottawa Glandorf with three different 4x2 teams here in this race. And that's a good problem to have, especially as you move throughout the season. And, you know, we start getting into warmer weather and Ottawa Glandorf really narrows us down. When you can put this many girls out here and, and see, you know, right now top two teams OG. But it looks like out there it's going to be Salina trying to push for that second place right now. Salina does come in with the second fastest seed time. It's Ottawa Glandorf's A coming in with a 151 flat. Salina A, 153.76. Final handoff is done, and these anchors are racing their way around. Yeah, it was good. Good job inside the zone for Ottawa Glandorf. They're going to have that big lead. Looks like they're going to hold on to it, but Salina's coming strong. But on that inside, as you take a look, it looks like Defiance right now trying to see if they can't make a run at the second spot. But I think they're going to run out of track as Salina looks like they're going to hold on. Ottawa Glandorf A, that's Olivia Fenbert bringing her team in for victory. Salina's Rachel Rammel anchoring her team to a second place finish. That is the girls, 4x200 meter relay. Up next will be event 8, the boys, 4x200 four meter relay. Event 8, the boys, 4x200 meter relay. This is heat 2 of 2 in lane 1, Defiance. Isaac Dankworth is your leadoff runner. Lane 2, Defiance A, that was Defiance B in lane 1. Defiance A in lane 2, Joey Robinson. In 3, Ottawa Glandorf B with Logan Freeman. Lane four, Salina A, Lucas Billerman, and Lane five, Ottawa Glandorf A, Will Schmitz. Uh, Nate, this wind is not settling down. <laughs> no, it actually seems like it's getting a little bit stronger. Those gusts are starting to build a little bit. and So it's definitely going to be some adversity for uh, these guys right now as they're hitting the track. And uh, it's going to be a common theme as we move throughout this meet. They're just going to have to figure out ways to adjust. It'll, it'll be interesting to see the different um, styles of running, especially when they hit that back stretch. We get a great view of it. You'll see a, a great view of it on the broadcast as well. Uh, you know, the, the ones who are more comfortable running in wind and the ones where this might be a little bit of a new experience for them. And that's the whistle, which means we are just about ready to get this race started. I love the 4x2. This is by far my, my favorite race. This is the one when, you know, during my coaching days, 4x2 is what we specialized in. And I, I love this race. You know, it's a kind of a mix of endurance and still that sprint. And you, you, there's still a lot of strategy involved in how you run the curves and where you put your different runners. And, you know, I, everybody kind of has their, their own personal favorite if you're involved in the track world. But I think this one uh, is, is by far my favorite race to watch.
And they are off and they are running around that first curve. Again, here's who we have in lane one. It's Defiance B, lane two, Defiance A, lane three, Ottawa Glandorf B, lane four, Salina A, lane five, Ottawa Glandorf B. Your top seed time coming in is lane five, Ottawa Glandorf with a, no, I correct myself, lane four, Salina is your top time coming in with a seed time of 135.5 couple of rough handoffs that time in that first turn. Ottawa Glandorf B looks like they had gotten off to a good start, but almost had to come to a complete stop to get that handoff off. And that's allowed Defiance to close that gap. As you see, Ottawa Glandorf A here leading down this front straight. Salina right there and Defiance coming in in third. Third handoffs are underway. Oh, that was a pretty close handoff there. Uh, running close, but it was clean as they make their way around the curve. It's kind of a little unique out of seeing the uh, top two running teams there. They almost have uh, open handoffs. They're kind of right next to each other. They're turning sideways, grabbing them. Usually in this 4 by 2 these are blind handoffs. The so 4 by 4 is really when you start seeing more of those open handoffs. Defiance is running um, the more traditional one. But OG and Salina, um, there's a little bit better handoff for both of them there in that final. As Salina now looks like they're going to kick it into the next gear. Landon Alidu, he's your anchor there, and he is racing his way around the curve, making it to this final straightaway. Well, he'll, he'll have the wind at his back. He's not like the other ones who are getting it, and uh, no question, he is taking it home. Yeah, Salina ran a nice race there, is able to take it there in the end. Ottawa Glandorf coming in second. Defiance doing a nice job closing that gap, but just ran out of track. And we'll be back right after this. You're watching the Salina Invitational presented by Wabash Mutual Telephone, proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. Welcome back to the Salina Invitational presented by Wabash Mutual Telephone, proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. I'm Jennifer Beck alongside Nate Garlock on this very windy day here in Salina, and it's time for event nine, the girls' 1,600-meter run. We have the following runners, Elliot Hammonds from Kenton, Kaylee Dameron from Salina, Emily Durham from Elida, Marissa Goodwin of New Haven, Bailey Block of Elida, Madeline Hovist of Ottawa Glandorf, Abigail Rudy of Decatur Bell, Ellen Scott of Decatur Bell, Ella Sisko of Defiance, Aries Odom of New Haven, Aubrey Hattery of Kenton, Bree Fiesel of Decatur Bell, Tayton Mush of Defiance, Jenilee Dameron of Salina, Kayla Danks of Elida, Layla Brissino of Defiance, Alexa Fortman of Ottawa Glandorf, and Aliyah Avers of Salina. And they are off and they are going and uh, probably not surprising, Alexa Fortman is already running her own race. Yeah, as expected, you know, she's a phenomenal distance runner. Going to see uh, great things out of her this year. Comes in at a 5.15 seed time for the season um, already. Expect to see that go down lower as we move throughout this year. As you see all the girls right now kind of running into that pack. For some of those girls, that pack running is going to be very important today. When you talk about the wind and, and how that's going to blow today, if you can get yourself tucked in on somebody's shoulder, let them take the wind for you. It's really going to make it a lot easier moving around this track and then you don't have to really worry about getting around them to hit that last you know three four you know 400 meters depending on what your time and your pace is but you know that's that's for everybody else Alexa Fortman right now not too overly concerned with this win she got out to a great start has almost a 75 meter lead already and as we see the first real pack come in here now 108 was her uh, split time there in that first 400 as she continues to lead this pack. And it is a pack for that second uh, place spot right now, just like you said, Nate, kind of tucking in just like the birds do and uh, settling in behind there, maybe helping out with some of that wind. Yeah, on a day like today, you're not really going out there going, okay, I'm going to set a PR. I'm looking for the times. It's about strategy. It's, okay, where do I need to be? Who do I need to be with so I can be in position at the end of the race to get the place that I need to get the points for my team? And when you look down there, you know, if you, you never want to say, okay, you know, you're not going to win this one. You always want to have that belief. But when you're running up against somebody like Alexa Fortman and you know what your time is and, you know, on a day like today, we're not dropping 15, 20 seconds off of a time. So that's what you're going to see. You see this pack running. Now they're kind of running more into a line. As you see the Salina runner make her move to, to move around a Decatur's number one runner. And they're just going to kind of run in that line, almost like an Indian run. Um, not my most, not my favorite uh, workout to have for the kids on the track, but they were they were bunched up there for a minute now, and now they're kind of making their move as 
um, we get to that lap and a half mark. No, oh, you just uh, you just took me back to my uh, distance running in my cross country days, Indian run. I can hear my coach telling me that, and I can still feel what it comes on to do that. Alexa Foreman is still your winner or your leader, and that's who you see right now. Uh, about how far behind do you think Salina is? Of course, Dameron, the Dameron sisters from Salina, both two great runners, and we've got one of those in the second place spot. Yeah, Salina right now running number two, but I mean, there's a pretty big distance. You're probably looking at about 110, 115 meter distance right now. Alexa Foreman is running a fantastic race she came around on that second lap at 230 she's running a five minute pace and you know i it's all going to come down to this third lap here because you know in the fourth lap she's going to bring it in and you're going to see a little bit quicker she can come around here pretty quick on this lap and not let this wind uh do too much damage to her she has a chance to drop time today which i gotta be honest with you i just did not think that we would see out of anybody in any race you know conditions like we're running right now but alexa just not letting that stop her well, what we've seen before with Alexa, I think that we will always be surprised with what we see her accomplish, uh, and she is continuing to be very strong. Um, you are probably not able to see the second place runner right now, who is about maybe 120 behind, possibly? Yeah, Alexa just continuing to open that lead right now. Salina working hard down there, opened up a lead on their own over OG second place runner. So they're starting to spread out a little bit. You're seeing a little bit of a group still back there fighting for, you know, fourth, fifth, and sixth. But they're starting to see that spread out as Alexa now is coming in and possibly on lap traffic, which is also not something you usually see in the 1,600 meters. That's right. She's possibly going to lap some runners right now. Alexa crosses that third line at 4.02. She is your leader. Your second place runner at the moment is Kaylee Dameron. She is a senior from Salina. And your third place runner at this moment is Madeline Hope. She is a junior from Ottawa Glandorf. You know, we talked about the time that they're dropping with that wind and on the back stretch, but you can just tell these girls are trying to make it up here on this front stretch. They're able to get their strides opened up. They're using the wind, letting it push them through, able to speed up a little bit. So really, the wind's kind of being neutralized right now because these girls are doing a great job of taking advantage of it on the front stretch. And they're in that final lap. Here it is. Four laps go a lot more quickly than people tend to think they're going to do. Alexa Fortman, your leader on the back stretch, fighting that wind just for about 200 more yards to go. What you noticing there? Well, when you look, I mean, Alexa Fortman is still very comfortably in front, and she's going to come away with this victory. But you got to give your hats off to Salina's number one runner. You know, we talked just about a lap ago. She was down probably 120, 125, and she has put some work in. And on that back stretch, she had closed that gap. She was down to about 80, but here comes Alexa Fortman now with about a 100-meter lead as she's going to try to kick it home. That strong determination that we always see on Alexa's face when she runs. There she is, eyeing her way to the finish line. Such a versatile runner here. First place in the 1600. We already saw her in the 200. We'll see her later on in the 800 and also in the 4x4. First place, Alexa Fortman. Now we're waiting on our second place runner who is making her way down the straightaway. Yeah. You know, she ran a great race as well, coming in at number two. Had to hang strong, and they tried to do that pack running for a little bit. We saw her in the mix on that pack, but she didn't let them slow her down. She still ran her race. We saw her break out of that one pretty early. So she's going to come home with a nice run here at number two, or in second place. And then Ottawa Glandorf's number two runner, running a nice race herself, finishing just about six minutes as these girls are doing a nice job kicking here. It's got to feel good to have when you're kicking to the finish and you got that strong wind at your back, kind of makes it makes up for all all that tough running you had to do on the back stretch. We just saw Decatur's, uh, uh, Decatur Bell's Ellen Scott push the other Ottawa Glendorf runner all the way to the finish line. From my viewpoint, I couldn't exactly see who got it at the tape, but we can see that on the finals. This is the girls' 1600 meter run at the Salina Invitational. Event 10, it's the boys' 1,600 meter run. Just one heat, just like we had for the girls. We've got Josiah Gonzalez of Defiance, Ty Rosengarten of Ottawa Glandorf, Cooper Fisher of Ottawa Glandorf, Brian Garcia of New Haven, Edwin Pineda of Ottawa Glandorf, Andrew Arnos of New Haven, Andrew Bax of Salina, Cole Seip, Decatur Bell, Ethan Rawl, Kenton, Colin Boining of Salina, Caleb Brashear of Defiance, Garrett Beamer of Elida, Connor Krogman of Salina, 
Caden Rauch of Decatur Bell, Cole Batt of Defiance, Jackson Blue of Kenton, Landon Bullenbacher of Elida, Elijah Obringer of Decatur Bell, and Aiden Ackles of New Haven. Any name that I mispronounced, I give you parents and grandparents full permission to email me so that I don't mispronounce it again in the future. <laughs> Yeah, this should be a good race. We got seven guys coming into this mile who have ran a sub five minute mile. Um, you know, we, you know, obviously the the recurring theme here is this wind, but I think we're going to see a lot tighter pack towards the front than we did in the girls. You know, the this, these uh, runners are being led by Ottawa Glandor's Ty Rosengarden. He run a 4:38 seed time, but this is what I expect that we'll see from most of this race. As you see this breakout up here up front, these guys getting in position, running that strategy, and then I expect that. Last, that last lap will really be uh, fun to watch as those guys are going to try to run away from each other. One of the things that I think is so fun with the distance runners is they know each other so well. In fact, a lot of times these guys train they don't train together but they do fun runs out of their own personal training yeah when you talk about the you know when you look at track as a whole you know you have your sprint you have your mid distance and you have your distance the the group that is mo the most familiar with one another they spend the most time around each other you, you see them they just have a different kind of relationship is those distance runners now some people will say it's because distance runners are a little bit off that's why you gotta that's why you're running distance you know you got you know <laughs> He's leaving me a little speechless because I, I was a distance runner in high school and college, and he's he's absolutely valid. I say that with great love in my heart. And, and I, I, as well, was a distance runner. That's why I feel very comfortable saying that. I ran cross country. I ran distance. It wasn't my favorite thing in track. I, I like the shorter distances in the track, but I, I was as well. But, you know, um, you, you're right. They have a different relationship with one another. They they. And that what makes these distance runs so much fun because these guys, they go out here and you'll watch them. I mean, they are just draining themselves because they want to beat that pride just a little bit different um, when it comes to these distance runs compared to them maybe, you know, what you see out of the sprinters or those mid-distance guys. So it's Rosengarten from Ottawa Glanderf, who still is your leader. Arnos from New Haven and Gonzalez from Defiance round out your top three at the moment. Yeah, those top three right now trying to separate themselves. But you see Defiance's second place runner trying to stay close. You got a little mini pack right there trying to make sure those top three guys don't run away from them. But Gonzalez doing a nice job of tucking in behind the New Haven runner. But right now Rosengarten with the lead, opening up just a little bit, extending that to about maybe five, seven meters. Um, but it's difficult when you're out there running by yourself and you're not quite sure where they are. You can hear the footsteps. Uh, you know that they're going to be coming at some point trying to make sure that you keep your pace. You know, you got to have something left in the tank because you know that that sprint's coming. You know, I call it a dead sprint. Those dead sprints, when those legs are gone and you got those last 100 meters, uh, you know that that is going to come and you want to make sure you have enough for that. Coming down here on the straightaway, still have Ottawa Glandorf as your leader, but still relatively, I say relatively close as we now get ready to see what these guys plan to do in this final lap. Yeah, it's amazing to see what the kind of energy they have after running, you know, three laps. Here comes the last one. They find that next gear as Rodengarden right now is running away from those guys, extending that lead out to about 15 meters. He looks really strong. New Haven right behind, looking like they're falling off just a little bit. Gonzalez trying to stay close, but, you know, you see the strides opening up on that backstretch, going into the wind, not wanting to lose any ground, knowing that, you know, we have a little bit, you know, we'll get that wind at our back in that hundred last 100 meters, as I think Gonzalez is going to be able to keep this one close, looking to try to chase down the New Haven runner. You can definitely see the strength in Gonzalez's strides right there as he is eyeing that runner, getting right on that straightaway. I think I just saw a quick look there from Ottawa Glandorf, checking to see just how much his uh, lead is. Won't give any uh, thoughts on whether that's a good or bad thing to do in track, but when you're the leader, I guess it uh, doesn't help, hurt to know. Yeah, you, I think a lot of that is just wanting to know, okay, when do I need to pick this up? Do I need to start picking it up now, or can I do it my normal spot? And If you're going to do it, I'm okay with it as a former coach. I'm okay with the peak on the curve because you're already kind of turned anyway. You're not really killing your momentum, uh, but it didn't really uh, phase Rodengardner at all as he was able to come away with that victory. Gonzalez not able to chase down the New Haven runner as he comes in third.
as we watch the final runners here make their way in. We just want to remind you that we are in the middle of our Spring to Life funding campaign, and it is time to spring to life with WOSN and TV44. This annual spring funding campaign is crucial for our station as we uh, need to continue making sure we've got all the necessary finances to keep all of our broadcasts going. Please partner with us by giving us a financial donation in any amount. Our campaign goal is $50,000, and we are nearing that goal. We're actually about 89%, so you can get us there uh, very quickly. Donate online at WTLW.com forward slash donate. When we return, it'll be time for the girls' 4x100 meter relay. You are watching the Salina Invitational, presented by Wabash Mutual Telephone, proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. Time now for event number 11. You are watching the Salina Invitational, presented by Wabash Mutual Telephone, proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. Heat two of the girls' 4 by 100 meter relay. In lane one, we have Decatur Bell leading off with Kaya Cannon. Lane two, Defiance A, Dynasty Lee. Lane three, Salina A, Ellie Hitchcock. Lane four, Elida A, Kennedy Clay. Lane five, Ottawa Glandorf A, Laney Hedrick. And lane six, Elida B, Miana Watson. Your top time coming in is Salina A with a seed time of 51.99. Yeah, Salina has a pretty good uh, lead as far as on paper looking at their seed time. Elida is going to be right there in the mix as well, and the, right behind them should be a pretty close group. So just we talked about in the 4 by 2 usually comes down to handoffs, how quickly you can get in and out of that zone cleanly. Um, you know, there's always a target number that you want to hit when you're in between the arrows there, and if you can get in and out of there clean, you know, it's really hard um, – it's really hard to catch the, catch the teams that do the best inside the zone. Yeah, you got to run fast in between the, the arrows and all those things. But if you're clean in and out, those are the teams that you see consistently win. You know, obviously, you know, the goal for any team is you want to make this look seamless. It, you want to make it look like no one has to stop, adjust their steps. You, know, you almost want to be one runner running at the same pace all the way around. And we just heard that whistle. Expect those ladies to get down in the blocks in just a moment, and this race will get off and going. that time on the set. Luckily, none of the girls fall started. Salina off to a good start, though, right in the middle of the track. They're already starting to eliminate um, eliminate the curve there, pulling everybody even, and they had a good handoff. Ottawa Glandorf also looked like had a pretty good handoff there as well as we hit that straightaway, and you can see that Salina runner pushing her head down to try and break that wind. Yeah, you know, you want to lower the head. You want to get down. Would I like to have seen her a little bit more at the waist than just kind of dropping that head at the neck area? But it still was effective. Ottawa Glandorf ran a nice second leg, still with a little bit of a lead here. But it looks like Elina's, Elida is erased, or Salina, excuse me, has erased that as they hand off almost at the exact same time. Nevea Huster is your uh, anchor for Salina, Emma Macon for Elida, and Ottawa Glandorf's Avery Fox. As you're coming down on this final, Salina does a great job running that last 100 meters. They're going to take this one home with Ottawa Glandorf right behind them. Event 12, the boys 4 by 100 meter relay. We just saw Kenton win the first heat. Here we have in heat two. In lane one, it's Elida, Jair Morgan. Lane two, Decatur Bells, Trevor Smith will lead off. Lane three, Ottawa Glandorf A with Will Schmitz. Lane four, Defiance A with Joey Robinson. And lane five, Ottawa Glandorf B, Logan Freeman. You see Defiance in lane four comes in with the top seat time as they come in running a 45-5-0, but Ottawa Glandorf A right next to them, 45-6-8, should be a good race between them. Good start by the teams as Defiance got out quick as they had that early lead. Here comes Ottawa Glandorf, though. Look at that speed. And having that on the backstretch is incredibly impressive. Got out fast. We'll see how the handoff is here. And it was clean. Yeah. Defiance with a little bit of a struggle that time. So they're going to have to make up some ground as Ottawa Glandorf B right now is right behind them. Certainly already seen the Ottawa Glandorf girls be very powerful today in this meet, watching the boys as well. And here we are in the straightaway. Oh, look at that anchor. 
Yeah, Ottawa Glendorf with a nice, strong run. They're going to take this one home. Defiance ends up pulling away from Ottawa Glendorf B for second. It all came down to that handoff there in the uh, second um, second leg down there. They Defiance struggled to put them behind. They weren't able to make up that ground. Well, that wraps it up for the 4x100 meter races for both boys and girls. Coming up next, it's the girls 400 meter dash. You're watching the Salina Invitational presented by Wabash Mutual Telephone, proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. Heat three of three in the girls 400 meter dash. And this race, so this heat will bring us several of the Ottawa Glendorf state qualifiers from last year. Those great runners that we are now seeing again. Here's who we have in lane one. It's Rose Turnwald of Ottawa Glendorf. Lane two, Mira Horvath of Defiance. Lane three, Olivia Fenburn of Ottawa Glandorf. Lane four, Mackenzie Denny of Defiance. Lane five, Corinne Clausen of Ottawa Glandorf. And lane six, Elena Carroll of Salina. Two freshmen making it into this fastest heat. And when you look at this heat, everybody is only separated by three seconds. You know, when you talk about track, three seconds can be quite a lot of time, but, you know, it's not impossible to kind of stay up there depending on where you are. So we could have a close race and an exciting finish here down this backstretch. Close race here, but I am already seeing Olivia Fenbert making up that stagger as these girls make it to that uh, very strong wind in this back straightaway. Yeah, you can see Alana Carroll trying her best to stay close and within striking range, but when you're on that outside lane, that's going to be really difficult as that stagger goes away. Out of Glandorf right now looking like they're running one and two when you try to anticipate where the stagger is going to come through. Defiance down there in three, and then Ottawa Glandorf having a fourth runner in the, um, or in the top, or a third runner, excuse me, in the top four. So they do a great job. They're going to run together here. This finish is going to come to be very close. The stagger is gone, and Defiance and OG right there going neck and neck. That's Mira Horvath, a senior from Defiance, against Olivia Fenbert, now leading over Olivia Fenbert, the senior from OG. But look at this finish. It looks like Ottawa Glandorf might have leaned. I mean, we're at a little bit of a tough angle up here in the press box. But what a great job that time uh, by Olivia Fenber, not giving up, able to uh, reel Horvath back in. And I'm not sure if Horvath held her off. You know, I think what we just saw is a, a precursor to what we're going to see for the rest of the season. Of course, uh, Defiance running very well. But OG, there's a strong girls team again this season. No, absolutely. They have runners all over the place in almost every event. They're competitive year in and year out. Um, and, you know, everybody else knows it. The WBL is extremely difficult difficult to run in anyway um, and then when you have to go up against the type of runners that OG's thrown at you it just it makes it that much more difficult it should be a, a lot of fun though especially this 400 you mentioned you know the talent that OG has Mira Horvath isn't going anywhere she's only going to get better as well so there's a lot of fun races to come this year between those groups all right, coming up next, it's going to be the boys 400 meter dash. Event number 14, the boys 400 meter dash. This is heat two of three. In lane one, it's Aaron Krogman of Salina. Lane two, Isaiah Judkins of Elida. Lane three, Nick Ellerbrock of Ottawa Glandorf. Lane four, Connor Johnson of Ottawa Glandorf. And lane five, Sabin Schof of Salina. Three freshmen running in this uh, heat. Two runners, however, below the one minute mark. Yeah, the senior from Elina, Isaiah Judkins, he has the low mark, 56-15, just out of reach of making into that, that final heat. So it looks like this will be his race to, to run here, but we'll see if anybody can track him down. Nick Ellerbrock is the next closest with a 59-55. And, of course, the thing to remember, just because he is in the second to last heat does not mean he cannot place. So he certainly has an opportunity, or any of these runners do, to run a speed that could get them up there in the placements. And he's already uh, making up some of that stagger. Yeah, he had a great start. He's already out in front. He's completely eliminated that stagger. So he's setting the pace. But you can see it looks like as they come through here, and it looks like Ellerbrock is staying right with him, trying to stay on that shoulder. But Judkins looked like he had a little bit of a win there. Kind of saw him bend a little bit, doing a nice job of bending from the waist, not the neck, though. As you know, we talked about it a little bit earlier. When you're going through, you want to cut that wind. And a lot of kids, when you tell them to do that, they think, okay, well, let me just lower the head. But they're still running upright. you got to get at the waist. you got to get through that. And they are very close to one another here as we come into this straightaway. Ellerbrock trying to close that distance, but it's going to be too much Isaiah Judkins as he's going to come away with this one.
Elida gets first in this heat. The two Ottawa Glandor fronters, second and third in this heat, two of three. Heat three of three in the boys' 400 meter dash here at the Salina Invitational, presented by Wabash Mutual Telephone. Proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. And speaking of Mercer County, we got a Salina runner in this heat. Here's who we have overall. In lane one, Mason Vogt of Ottawa Glandorf. Lane two, Alex Hoffer of New Haven. Lane three, Luke Westfall of Defiance. Lane four, Trevor Tressler of Defiance. Lane five, Landon Alido of Salina. And lane six, Brogan Castillo of Defiance. Three Defiance runners in this heat. Yeah. This start is going to be incredibly important. We have five runners in this heat that are separated by nine-tenths of a second or less. As you can see, a great start out there. Uh, in uh, looks like Lane. Salina. I lane think that's five. Salina. I'll do it. Got a great jump out there, but we'll see if he can hold him off. We mentioned the stagger, so it's a little bit deceiving, but he has a big lead right now. Well, and we will get the big picture once we get them around, but this is not surprising me because I watched Alidu run earlier today and I could see the strength that he had. Really was curious to see what he'd do in this 400. Yeah, he seemed to not be phased by the wind at all, was able to get out there as he has this lead coming around, but Ottawa Glandorf trying to close that gap, but Alidu looking stronger, getting the lean, getting on the front part of his feet as he's going to run a very nice race here today. He's also going to get a PR based off of what his seed time is. Pretty impressive considering the wind that we had. Otto Glandorf coming in second. And that wraps it up for the 400-meter dash. We'll come back next with the girls' 300-meter hurdles. Event 15, girls 300 meter hurdles, heat two of three. Lane one, Isis Love of Elida. Lane two, Avery Smith of Kenton. Lane three, Isabel Genowicki of Defiance. Lane four, Miley Walters of Salina. Lane five, Greta Leibricht of Ottawa Glandorf. And lane six, Tia Coyne of Decatur Bell. These 300 hurdles, we were talking about how difficult the 400 meter run was for these kids uh, cut just a couple of races ago. And then back on the track, it seems like it's a shorter distance, so maybe it won't be quite as difficult. But when you start jumping over those hurdles and you're talking about your timing and now you're jumping into the wind, it's all going to come off to the start. And this is a very difficult race, especially when you're trying to pace yourself and, and figure out what, what you need going into those hurdles and heading into this uh, curve. I have a lot of respect for the runners who run this race because of the intensity and the uh, grit that is needed in order to do this. Plus, we're adding in this wind, too. They started out right in that wind. Yeah, I mean, you, know, you, you have to start jumping over things and, you know, you're trying to work on your form. You want to make sure your trail leg's right. You, you know, you want to get all these things right. You know, that in the first uh, heat today, you know, we saw one of the girls have a hard time um, clearing one of one of these hurdles here on this front stretch front stretch and it just it all goes into the energy and the effort and what you have to put into these and it's this is not an easy race by any stretch one more hurdle to go for our leader who is from OG that's Greta Leibrick and she's in lane five. Oh. and that's what we, and that's what we talked about you know this is it's not easy to watch any of these kids when they follow these hurdles it it does not feel good it, it, it hurts and that's part of this race though is you know making sure that you have enough as you go down this front stretch that's why this is such a difficult race why you know we talked about having the respect for these girls that and these guys who run this race this is a you know one of those specialties and if this is your specialty it just makes you kind of a a, a different style of runner um you know, hopefully she got up. Looks like she's going to be okay. It did cost her a first place finish, but looks like she's walking okay over there. So glad to see she's all right. So your winner in this heat ended up being Miley Walters of Salina. Salina one, OG two in heat two of three. Heat three of three, event 15, the girls 300 meter hurdles. In lane one, Clara Beach of Ottawa Glandorf. Lane two, Madeline Liebrecht of Ottawa Glandorf. Or Liebrecht, Liebrecht, Liebrecht. Give me a call, ladies, and let me know so I can... Pronounce your name correctly in the meets to come. Lane three, Jenka Jackson of New Haven. Lane four, Regan Rigg of Defiance. Lane five, Allison Schwederman of Salina. And lane six, Rachel Rammel, also of Salina. Schwederman had a great start. She was up over the hurdle first. It looks like right there in the middle of the track, eliminating is going to be... Is that Defiance's Reagan Rigg? She actually got dropped down into this one because of a couple of shuffles, and she's taking full advantage here of, of this effort. She's now leading coming around this curve. She's got about a two-step lead coming over that hurdle leading into the front stretch. 
No, okay, I had the wrong key. That's not Reagan Rig. That's actually New Haven's. That is Jackson. Jackson. But, oh, but take a look at this clip finish. They are neck and neck coming down into it. Sweeterman trying to catch her, and it's going to be a lean at the line. I think Sweeterman might have out leaned her because it looked like Jacks. It looked like Jackson stayed upright as Sweeterman leaned at the line. So we'll have to wait to see uh, when we get the official results. Who took that one? Good race by these ladies. That's the girls' 300 meter hurdles right here at the Salina Invitational. Heat two of three in the boys' 300 meter hurdles. Lane one, Lance McClure of Defiance. Lane two, Mason Jeffries of Salina. Lane three, Jonathan Barton of Decatur Bell. Lane four, Colbin Bachman of Defiance. And lane five, Luke Lazarich of Salina. Had some moving around of these 300 meter hurdle heats. So a couple of matchups that we weren't sure that we were going to see. We'll see how they these guys do. Good start. Looks like just about everybody, but out to a huge lean out there in the far lane. It looks like that is Luke, Luke Lazarich of Salina, the, the junior from Salina. I got one of the old heat sheets to try to track them all through. A little bit of a struggle, but he's doing a nice job coming through that curve. As everybody's going to be even in this last 100, and he has a big lead. Ottaville was the uh, team who did not make it today. Um, we do not know the exact reason why, but that did make a lot of changes for the racing. And like you said, that Salina runner cruising his way to a win in this heat. Yeah, Salina going one and two. Mason Jeffries, Luke Lazarus doing a nice job for their team there. Good run. And we mentioned still a difficult day to run. These hurdles are, are incredibly difficult. Glad to see everybody got over clean. Heat three of three in the boys' 300-meter hurdles. We mentioned that we don't have Ottoville here, and that would have been um, a lot of fun because we would have had Kellen Schlagbaum and Garrett uh, Trentman running in this race. But instead, we got some other great runners, and this is who we have. In lane one, Dane Dooling of Ottawa Glandorf. Lane two, Nicasio Hall of Defiance. Lane three, Aaron Hoffer of New Haven. Lane four, Jaden Oliver of Ottawa Glandorf. Lane five, John Lutz of Salina. And lane six, Chase Faber of Ottawa Glandorf. Dane Dooling got out to a tremendous start there in lane one. He has already erased the stagger there on the inside. He's out to a big lead. We'll see if he can hold that, but he's over the hurdle significantly sooner than most of these guys. That's really, in hurdles, it's kind of nice when you're looking at the staggered because you can tell who's out in lead based on when they go over the hurdle. Dane Dooling running a fabulous race. A little bit back on his heels there, but a little stutter into that one. We'll see how he clears this last one. Hopefully he has the energy. Looks like he's going into it strong. Gets right over it and a great time as it looks like Dane PR there by almost three seconds. That is a great start for him for this uh, this season. Expect to watch more of him. OG is your winner here in this race. When we return, it's the girls' 800 meter run, which will include your state record holder, Alexa Fortman. Welcome back to the Salina Invitational, presented by Wabash Mutual Telephone, proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. I'm Jennifer Beck, alongside Nate Garlock, and now it's time for event 17, the girls' 800-meter run, two times around the track in this strong wind. We have these runners. Raven Harris of Salina, Ellen Scott of Decatur Bell, Zoe Foxvog of Elida, Ella Sisko of Defiance, Abigail Rudy of Decatur Bell, Alexa Fortman, your state record holder, both indoor and outdoor in this race, Ottawa Glandorf, Lane 7, Emma Morgan of Salina, Lane 8, Kira Ray of Kenton, Lane 9, Anna Buttlemeyer of Ottawa Glandorf, Lane 10, or not Lane 10, number 10, Aubrey Hattery of Kenton, 11, Aries Odom of New Haven, 12, Keeley Carpenter, Decatur Bell, 13, Madison Minton, New Haven, 14, Maya Homier of Defiance, 15, Madeline Hovis, Ottawa Glendorf, 16, Bria Pearson of Salina, and 17, Tayton Mush of Defiance. Just like the mile, this looks like this is Alexa Fortman's race to run here. She has quite a big lead, at least on paper. Her two teammates right behind her, 231, 233. So it looks like we're going to have an OG pack up front. But Ellen Scott from Decatur Bell, she'll be not too far behind trying to trail him in. Just one thing to uh, notice as well is Alexa Fortman comes in with a seed time of 2.20. And if I remember correctly, she ran a 2.08 at state last year. Yeah, a lot different. You know, not just the just not the conditioning, obviously, and being in better shape by the time we hit, you know, state temperature. You know, not being cold. You know, when you, especially when you start looking at running, the warmer it is, the better it is. The muscles are a lot looser. You can get going a little bit more. These cold days, it's kind of hard to get those strides going, get those muscles firing. And we are off to a start, as you see, 
Alexa trying to take the lead right out the gate on the inside, and she does just that as she'll open that lead and look to control this pace from the very beginning. Alexa Fortman, Belmont University commit. She will be running track and cross country for them next year. And one of the things that she certainly has achieved during her high school career is the ability to race against herself, um, seeing her continue to post strong times despite the fact that, like we already see here, uh, she is the leader up front. Yeah. You know, for the girls, unlike the guys where it seems to, th especially in our area, we have a lot of those guys, mid-distance and distance runners, who seem like they're pretty close in times. Um, on the girls' side of things right now, we, we don't really have that. We have a couple of those elite runners who run out front a lot more, and that can be difficult at times because you don't start getting pushed. You don't start seeing um, that competition maybe until you m maybe even get to districts and then regionals and then on to the state. So, you know, the whole season's really about, you know, trying to learn how to race against yourself, set your pace know how to push yourself so you can continue to get better so when you do finally get up against you know somebody that can push you be with you you know you're ready for that 106 approximately was Alexa's split we've got OG in the first second and third positions here and I believe that is Decatur Bell number four yeah, it looks like pretty much just like it was down on paper. Ellen Scott from Decatur Bell down there in fourth. And the three OG runners running out front. Right now, seed uh, positions at least. Times look like they're going to fall a little bit, but at least the seed positions will hold. Alexa Fortman continues to be your strong leader as she now is within the final 200 of this 800 race. Alexa Fortman coming in with a 2.20 seed time. Uh, she is a senior from Ottawa Glandorf, and we still have OG in the second and third positions. I think we're seeing a little glimpse of what we might have in a 4x800, maybe even at the state level. Don't want to predict, but we're seeing some good stuff here. Yeah, when you can have three runners like this, you know, it, they're definitely going to be right there. And Don't look now, though, as you look back in fourth place. We talked about Ellen Scott in fourth, but Raven Harris of Salina just took her over. So Salina trying to make a move here, get some moves. Uh, some points, you know, but you mentioned that four by eight and potentially what it could look like when we get down to Columbus to Jesse O and Ottawa Glandorf, at least here in the early going, looks like they're going to be right there in contention. OG getting that first, second, and making their way into third. Salina, Raven Harris will get the fourth place spot here in the girls' 800 meter run. Moving on now to the boys to 800 meter run. Definitely not the 200 meter run. This is the 800 meter run. This is heat two of two. Number one, Cole Batt of Defiance. Number two, Isaac Mackey of Ottawa Glendorf. Number three, Andrew Arnos of New Haven. Number four, Ethan Rowell of Kenton. Number five, Brian Garcia of New Haven. Number six, Aiden Wood of Kenton. Number seven, Caleb Brashear of Defiance. Number eight, Adam Faber of Salina. Number nine, Jack Kanapke of Salina. And number 10, Jackson Fortman of Defiance. Coming in, the favorites, Andrew Arnos from New Haven. He has a seed time of 2.07. But unlike the girls, everybody here in this boys' race is um, pretty close as far as their times go. So we should see a little bit closer race here as we get to the to the front. As you can see, pretty good start there on the inside. And these guys will pack up here, try to run together, and then we should see pretty much an all-out sprint, at least for the last 200. Still staggered out in those lanes as they make their way around to the point where they can then move their way into lane one. And that's when we'll kind of see the big picture of who is in the lead. But I think we do know specifically the one person in the lead. And that is number three, Andrew Arnos of New Haven. Yeah, Ar Arnos leading the pack like he was expected to out of a Glandorf right there trying to reel him in but Arnos running a great race right now he looks to be extending that lead here as they begin the second lap oh, well, round of 102 was his uh, split time there as uh, like you said Nate yeah extending the lead um, coming in here with with a plan which of course you see with the 800 runners uh, these top runners know what they want to do in that second lap yeah, absolutely is. You know, you're going to see him turn it on here, but right behind him, Ottawa Glandorf in second. Cole Blatt, though, from Defiance right there, trying to reel him in. A pretty good fight there for second, as you have Ottawa Glandorf, Defiance, and Kenton all trying to take that spot. 
I'm really interested to see what happens now as we get this final 200. This is the point where the people who have the endurance are going to push this out in the end. Though it does appear that that second, third, and fourth might be, uh, well, take a look at Kenton in uh, fourth place. He might be sneaking up in a third place spot. Yeah, Aiden Wood, it's all going to come down to this kick. If Aiden looks like he's going to go around defiance right now, he's trying to reel in Ottawa Glandorf. Looks like he's going to be do, do it. And Aiden Wood comes from fourth to second as he runs a great race. He'll go home with second place. Ottawa Glandorf third, defiance. Holds off a couple of charging runners that take home third. We are back to the sprints at the Salina Invitational, which is presented by Wabash Mutual Telephone, proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. This is the 200 meter dash. It is heat three of four. In lane one, Nevea Huster of Salina. Lane two, Delaney Dooling of Ottawa Glandorf. Lane three, Savannah Recker of Ottawa Glandorf. Lane four, Kaya Cannon of Decatur Bell. Lane five, Samantha Hohenberger of Defiance. And lane six, Mackenzie Denny of Defiance. Savannah Recker got out to a great start coming out of the blocks as she's going to lead coming down this front stretch. Her teammate right on her shoulder trying to reel her in. But New Haven doing a great job. No, excuse me, that's Decatur trying to get that second place spot. We'll see if Dooling's able to hold on as Wrecker's going to take home first. And it looks like Dooling does take home second here in this heat. So that is heat two of three. OG finishing one, two in heat three of four, rather. Heat three of four in the girls' 200. This is heat four of four in the girls' 200 meter dash. In lane one from Salina, Ellie Hitchcock. Lane two from New Haven, Jenka Jackson. Lane three from Elida, Emma Macon. Lane four from Salina, Kira Dirksen. Lane five from Decatur Belmont, Haley Wels Welsey. And lane six from Ottawa Glandorf, Lainey Hedrick. They had the girls set there. Not quite sure what's going on as the uh, official had them come back up as they're looking to get some things squared away here before they get this 200 going. But should be a good 200. Top seed time coming in is Emma Macon out of Elina with a 27-12. But right next to her will be Kira Durkinson of Salina with a 27-9. So it should be a good race as it looks like Durkinson is going to need to come out with a good start to try to stay with Emma. Wesley and Jackson also coming in in the uh, 28 range. And Jackson, we've already seen her run a few races. Really strong runner out of New Haven. Of course, we don't have a lot of New Haven on our broadcast. So that's a runner I haven't seen a lot of before. Yeah, me either. The juniors had a good day today, though. We've seen her being towards the front of every race that she's ran today. So would expect the same thing out of her as the official now is going to have them get reset back in their blocks. So, Nate, I only see four runners here. wonder if that's part of part of it was we don't have all six of our runners that we had on our heat sheet. Yeah, something must have happened down there, and that's why we had the, uh, the late start that time as the official had everybody get reset. But we do still have our top seed in this race. As you see Emma Macon come down this front stretch, she's going to take away the victory. A tight race between Jackson and... And it looks like that might have been Haley Wesley as she was there as well. So a good run um, from the four girls that ended up taking the track that time. But when it was all said and done, Elida's Emma Macon comes away with the victory. Heat three of four in the boys' 200-meter dash. In lane one, it's Keegan Bullock of Elida. Lane two, Joey Robinson of Defiance. Lane three, Ben Sprague of Decatur Belmont. Lane four, Brendan Winstead of Ottawa Glandorf. And lane five, Logan Freeman of Ottawa Glandorf. Boys' 200 here should be good. We'll see if we get some close races like we had when the girls. Starts have been important here all day long and another good start. That time coming out of, I believe that is lane two or three, Defiance's runner Joey Robinson, lane two, had a great start as he's trying to make up that stagger as they come into the straightaway. Noting here, we actually don't have Brendan Winstead in lane four, so this is a four-runner heat here, and close finish to the end. Yeah, Elida did a great job 
lane number one, Keegan Bullock. He had to come from behind a little bit there as he was right on Robinson's shoulder, but ended up overtaking him with about 25 meters left to go and held off uh, both of his challengers to win his heat. Well, as we wait for the 200 dashers to get into the blocks here in the fastest heat, we want to remind you that if your family members want to watch WSN but can't because they don't live in the area, guess what? They can get our streaming broadcast 24-7 online on Roku and Apple TV. Download our Roku channel and Apple TV app to subscribe. A $100 annual donation allows you and your loved ones to watch anywhere in the world. Visit app.wosn.tv to sign up. Heat four of four in the boys' 200-meter dash. In lane one, Alex Hoffer of New Haven. Lane two, Anthony Wilder of Defiance. Lane three, Will Schmitz of Ottawa Glandorf. Lane four, Landon Alidu of Salina. Lane five, Adrian Anderson of New Haven. And lane six, Isaac Dankworth of Defiance. And we were talking a little bit during the last break. You know, Landon Aledu, the day that he has had, even though he's not that top seed coming into this race, I think we both feel like we're going to see a strong outing out of him. He's out there. As he looks immediately like he eliminated at least part of that stagger. But on that inside, Defiance is Anthony Wilder running extremely strong, looking good. As he's looking to try to take this lead here in the straightaway, we're going to have a heck of a race here. Aledu and Wilder going neck and neck. And we'll see if it's going to come down to the lean at the end. And I think that LA dude took it. I think you're right. Of course, our angle here in the press box isn't exactly straight on. Uh, you might be able to see it a little bit better from Jacob O'Neill's camera there straight ahead. But as you mentioned, yeah, Alidu, Salina, he's one to watch for the coming for the coming uh, um, weeks to come, I guess. Yeah, you know, you know, when you talk about early season results and, and some of the things you see in the guys coming into today, you know, they've already had a meet or two under their belt, so there's some seed times there. And to come here today in these conditions, temperatures are dropping. We, we've talked about the wind. And to be able to see him dropping times and winning races that maybe some people didn't expect him to win, you know, if he continues progressing like this, you could see big things out of him the rest of the year. Time now for the girls' 3,200-meter run here at the Salina Invitational. Presented by Wabash Mutual Telephone, proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. Well, the girls are off and running, and we had 14 listed on our heat sheet. Not all 14 are running, but I'll read off the names that we have listed here. Number one, Layla Bre Brissino of Defiance. Lane two, Bree Fiesel of Decatur Belmont. Three, not three, uh, not lane three, rather. Number three, Jenilee Dameron of Salina. Four, Lily Swihart, New Haven. Five, Mackenzie Selzer of Decatur Belmont. Six, Emily Durham of Elida. Seven, Marissa Goodwin of New Haven. Eight, Elliot Hammonds of Kenton. Nine, Kaylee Dameron of Salina. Ten, Addie Manns of Kenton. Eleven, Tatum Andrew Salina. Twelve, Ellen Scott, Decatur Belmont. 13, Bethany Cameron of Kenton. Yeah, looking forward to the race between Emily Durnham and uh, Addie Manns as they're only about two or three seconds separated from each other. And you can see already they're out in front as Manns just kind of tucked herself in behind Emily. As the today, I mean, the two mile in general kind of seems like cruel and unusual punishment. But when you talk about the conditions that they're going to have to run in today, this is going to be a tough, brutal race. And it's almost just going to kind of be a survival of the fittest out here. Just who can, can control the elements and can still run their strategy and run the race that they want to run as they have to deal with this these winds in general. Then the gusts that are coming, temperatures are dropping as a nice job coming down that backstretch by the Salina runner, able to catch both of those girls because coming around that curve, that was about a 25-meter lead that she's already erased. Well, Dameron's a very uh, – she's a seasoned runner. She knows what she's doing. She's a smart runner. Of course, all those girls are well-known runners. Those are names that we've said many times. But we're going to watch her. She is on the outside there, so she is uh, – that's not exactly where you want to be when you're running this. But we'll see what happens as we get closer to that straightaway. You know, Nate – as you were talking earlier, we're in the press box, so the people at home didn't quite hear that roar of wind that came out as you were talking. I saw our camera bobble. Yeah, those wind gusts, you know, the wind by itself, I mean, you're talking about about 20 mile an hour winds right now sustained, but we're getting wind gusts over 30, 40 mile an hour. And when those take and you're not ready for them, it, it makes you move, it, it shifts you, it stands you up, especially if you're on that back stretch. And it's very difficult to run and it's, it's not a fun thing to deal with right now. You know, you like it when you're coming down this front stretch, it's pushing you, you're feeling like you could open the strides a little bit, you know, be a little bit more comfortable, but you definitely pay for it on the back stretch. 
All right, as he was saying that, you can see Salina has now taken the lead here as they make their way around that third curve, getting ready to finish their second lap in this 3,200 meter run. As we continue to watch this race, I'm gonna shift our discussion over to Ottawa Glandorf's Alexa Fordman, who uh, we have already seen run in three races today. You ran a 200 leg, you ran the mile, and you ran the 800. Yeah, definitely a wide range of events today, for sure. <laughs> and then you still have a 400 left to go. So you got your sprinting going, you got your distance going, a little bit of everything, and it's all happening in the wind. Yeah, definitely makes it a little bit harder, but it's just got to drive through it and push through. So talk to me a little bit about your races, especially like in that 800 and that mile. It was you against the wind in most of those. What was going through your mind as you knew you had to race yourself and keep up the pace despite these weather conditions? Yeah, I really just wanted to keep my focus on God. And Isaiah says, those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength and, and just kind of drive in and just keep his, my focus on him and not distract myself with those around me and just really focus on running my race for his glory. Well, your focus so far is just inspirational and great. Um, it's always a joy to watch you race, and it's always a joy to hear you uh, witness your faith as well. First, uh, is this the first meet of the season for you? We had like a dual meet Tuesday, but this is the first invite of the year. So think about, um, I, I know you got big goals, uh, you always do, um, but talk about not only today's race, but what you're hoping for in this season. Really just um, a strong team aspect, I think, this year we have so many great runners all the way from sprinters to distance to field event. I think just really encouraging, especially the underclassmen, to really give all you got. I think our team has a great chance going into the postseason and even at each invite. So just keeping focus on the present moment and just building up as a full team this year will be exciting. Yeah, it is always exciting. I love the fact to be able that we at WSN can continue to uh, not just broadcast, uh, you know, West Central Ohio athletics, but watch you all the way. It was so fun to watch you last year at the state meet. Um, shifting gears really quick. If I'm remembering correctly, your mom said that you've had an opportunity to share your testimony or, or do some Bible study type stuff with um, maybe FCA or, or type things. Yeah, my teammate Claire Beach and I really just try to encourage the girls to go to some FCA meetings and we're trying to lead prayers before practice and really just fix our focus on God this season and remember that it's a greater purpose that we're running for and really just get the whole team on board. Awesome, awesome. All right, so you've got the four by four coming up next and then you can get out of the wind. Yeah, yep, finally. One more lap round. <laughs> All right, Alexa Fordman, thank you. Thank you so much. I'm sure this is not the last time we will talk with her this season. And um, again, Alexa, thanks for stopping up here in the press box. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> And now we rejoin the 3,200 meter right here with two laps to go. And our leader at the moment is Kaylee Dameron. I'm um, yes, Kaylee Dameron from Salina with Addie Manns from Kenton right on her heels behind. This is the final 800. Kaylee Dameron running a nice race, came in with the top time of 12.21. But Addie Manns, she's about 10 seconds behind her um, as far as her seat time went. She has done a great job of pretty much getting right on to Dameron's shoulder, letting Dameron take all that wind and hanging right with her. So as they come here in the last you know, 600 meters left to go. It'll be interesting to see when Mans is going to make the decision that she wants to go and try to get by her. I'd imagine we'll still be maybe probably about a lap away. Maybe in the last 200, Mans will try to see if she can't move around her and, and try to get this victory. You know, one thing that's happened throughout this entire race is we have had Dameron in the lead, which means she's been taking the brunt of the wind on this whole thing. Yeah, and that's what, it was a great strategy by Addie Manns. You know, uh, Addie has just hung out right behind her. She's let Dameron have to do a lot of that hard work where she's kind of had a little bit uh, easier go of it because she hasn't had to worry about cutting that wind. Dameron's doing it for her. So as they come down here in this straightaway last 400 meters, you know, Addie is probably the fresher of the two runners. I think we can see the uh, pace increasing here, and Manz is not wanting to let her go, but now we're watching Dameron step it up and just possibly a tiny increase in that lead. Yeah, and a part of this too is we're getting into a little bit of lap traffic for both of those leaders, so that's going to come into play because that may slow... Um, Dameron down a little bit as she has to hit that lap traffic first. Mans is able to react to that, so it's not as much of an adjustment. And we'll see if Addie Mans is able to take advantage. But Addie Mans is doing a great job opening up her stride back there into the wind and hanging right with Dameron. But Dameron, a strong runner right now, holding her off. As it looks like she's extending that lead a little bit. And the more that that lead extends, that break that Mans was getting from the wind that Dameron was um, – doing for her goes away as you see Dameron now really opening things up. 
Yeah, we're seeing the uh, endurance that she's got here in this final 200. Her stride is stepping out, a bigger stride. Her arms are pumping, and that lead is just getting getting larger. Yeah, I went from them just being a step away from each other. She's really opened it now, about a 10-meter lead. And we know this front stretch, you're able to take advantage of it because you have the wind at your back now. So... Dameron looks like she's going to hold on and come away with this victory. Addy Mans has run a tremendous race. as they, It looks like she may still run a PR on the season, depending on how quick she can finish here. As Dameron is going to take away that victory. Mans, not able, quite able to get that PR, but still a very good run, especially in today's conditions. Actually, I think that may have been a PR, Nate, because Addie Mans comes in with a 12.35, and she might have run about a 12.33 right there. Of course, we, we're, we don't have the official clock, so we're just making a guess. Third place, we are now waiting for our third place runner to make her way in, and looks like Salina is going to make it 1-3 as we've got a Salina runner making her way into the finish line, the sister of the winner. Yeah, it's... Uh Jenna Lee Dameron, who you'd imagine does a lot of training with her sister, runs a strong race here. Emily Durnham for Elina right behind her. She had a bit of an off race. We expected to see her more towards the front with the leaders as she fell back to fourth. But Jenna Lee Durham, or excuse me, Jenna Lee uh, Dameron uh, runs a PR today. A, a great race ran by her as Salina puts two in the top three. So your finisher is here in the girls' 3,200 meter one meter run. It's Salina first place, Kenton second place, Salina third place, and Elida finishes in fourth. We are nearing the end of this rather cold and very windy invitational, and it's event 22, the boys' 3,200-meter run. Here are the runners that we have listed on our heat sheet. Number one, Brandon Fry, Ottawa Glandorf. Number two, Aiden Eisenacher, New Haven. Number three, Ty Rosengarten, Ottawa Glandorf. Number four, Cooper Fisher, Ottawa Glandorf. Number five, Jonah Harris, New Haven. Number six, Colin Boining of Salina. Number seven, Hayden Wittenbarger, Decatur Belmont. Number eight, Connor Krogman of Salina. Number nine, Hendricks Myers of Defiance. Ten, Josiah Gonzalez, Defiance. Eleven, Landon Rich, Decatur Belmont. Twelve, Braden Herbert, Defiance. Thirteen, Caden Steed, Salina. And fourteen, Aiden Ackles, New Haven. And, Nate, is it just me, or does the wind keep picking up every time these races start? Yeah, I was just about to say, it was very nice of the wind to decide that it wanted to start going again, whipping pretty hard as the two-mile gets underway. Should be a competitive race. Ty Rosengarten, the top seed coming into this, he's the only runner so far that is under 10 as he comes in with a 9.57 mark. Um, a couple of runners will be relatively close to him. Look for Josiah Gonzalez, who gave him some competition in the mile to be right with him as you see those two immediately get out in front. And I think that no one is going to feel badly if uh, Rosengarten does not break the 10-minute mark today. That win that these guys have to face on that back straightaway is no joke. Yeah, and I know we've talked about the wind a lot today, but, I mean, it's just really just you, you can't undersell enough the conditions that these guys have had to run in. You know, the, the guys and girls today – it's almost worsened as the meet has gotten on. You know, when, when the day talk started, as you were when you were talking um, and doing your interview a little bit ago, you know, she mentioned, you know, it was sunny. It was nice when they got here. It was it was warm. I when we got here as well to set up for the broadcast. It, I mean, the wind was blowing, but it was still a, a decent temperature outside. The temperatures dropped. It's you know under 30 now with the wind. The wind has only gotten stronger. And these kids, they have come out and you know what? You see them kind of laughing and joking. There's still a lot of uh, a lot of runners out here as you had another huge gust coming through, shaking the windows up here in the press box. But you, know, you got to commend these kids to be able to come out here running these conditions. And we've seen some pretty good times today, too. We actually have. We've seen some PRs, at least according to the seed times that we have here. Here we are into the second lap, and it's still OG in the first place spot. Defiance is number two, Salina three, and OG is four. And we are making a quick jump. To the end of this race, well, almost the end of this race, Ty Rosengarten is our leader with two laps to go. The sophomore from Ottawa Glendorf with a strong lead. Second place is now Salina has just made that change over Defiance. 
Yeah, Colin has done a nice job. It took him a little while to reel in Gonzalez as Gonzalez had gotten off to a fast start, was trying to stay with Rosengarten, but Rosengarten really pulled away, opened up that lead. And so uh, Bunning had to chase Gonzalez down, had to get him in position. And going into these last two laps, he's done that, been able to overtake him. As now he's opening his lead there on um, and trying to just to control second place. Of course, what you are watching right now is our leader, and that's Rosengarten from Ottawa Glandorf, making his way around, lapping a few more people as he gets to that final 200 to go in this race. Yeah, he's done a nice race. You know, I mean, obviously, you know, we've we've um, repeated ourselves multiple times as far as the conditions go, um, but he's doing a nice job getting into some of that lap traffic, looking to end this last 100 meters strong as he goes around one of his teammates. He's going to come away and be able to cruise at this victory. As you see, Gonzalez is falling a little farther back. Colin now opens up that lead on second. And then a little ways back in fourth place is going to be one of uh, Ro uh, it's going to be one of Rosengarten's teammates. Uh, I'm not quite sure if that's Brandon Fry. And it's probably Cooper Fisher is more likely as he's sitting in that four seat. So Ottawa Glendorf is going to have two in the top four. All right, so we're at the 924, 925, 926 mark here. Of course, Ty Rosengarten came in with a 957.94. But with this type of conditions and this early in the season, I suspect he's going to be happy to finish with whatever he gets. Yeah, I, I don't think seed time or, or you know any of those things right now were kind of coming into play for anybody today. If you happen to get it, that was great. I think it's more about, especially here in the early going, it's more about getting out there, getting the laps in, getting the miles in, you know, just kind of continuing those conditioning. You know, these distance guys are going to put a lot of miles in over the season, and, and sometimes you just get in these races and you find your pace. You're like, you know, we're going to cruise into it, get a good workout in here, and and work on a few things. That's worked for him today as you see him finish up here in this final 50 meters as he's going to finish with a nice strong kick. He really does have a lot of kick there at the end. Wow, pretty impressive to see how much he's got left after facing that wind for eight laps on that back stretch. About 10.22 is about where he finished. So OG guys get uh, some nice points there with first place finish. Now we will wait and watch for our second place runner, and he's from Salina, and he is cruising his way into the final straightaway. Yeah, showing a nice kick from Colin as well. As he's opening up those legs, knees are getting high, big, long strides, arms are pumping. And watch for it. He's coming here in the camera right now. As he's going to finish, he's going to cross about 10.52. So a, a, a nice time. One of those ones, again, you know, he's probably not going to be overly happy with his time as now third place Gonzalez from Defiance is looking to finish. As he'll be over 11. But I don't think anybody's going to be looking at times right now. It's going to be more about placing and, and you're just kind of the – feeling good about the strategy that you ran today. Absolutely. Watching uh, Ottawa Glanders Rosengarten go and give a, a fist bump over there to Gonzalez. It's always neat to see how these, these runners have a camaraderie and a relationship with each other. So that's first, second, and third place that have finished. You had OG1, Salina2, and you've got uh, Defiance3. And a lot of cheering here at the end here as Salina is making his way, trying to trying to, to uh, get that fifth place spot. Didn't quite get it. Was coming up on that OG runner so that's first second third fourth and fifth place in the boys 3200 meter run Well, we have come to the final two races in the Salina Invitational. The 4x4 four four relays are happening now. Remember, your track invitational is presented by Wabash Mutual Telephone, proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics, and we are certainly thankful for Wabash Mutual Telephone's ongoing support. It's event 23, the girls' 4x400 four four meter relay. We just had heat one, which saw Elida get a come-from-behind win over Salina, and now it's heat two of two. In lane one, it's Defiance leading off with Samantha Hohenberger. Lane two, Salina leading off with Bria Pearson. Lane three, Ottawa Glandorf leading off with Olivia Fenbert. That's OGA. In lane four, it's OGB with Rose Turnwald as your uh, lead off. Lane five, OGC with Madeline Leibricht. And we had Decatur Belmont on our list for lane six, but I looks like they have decided to head home. Yeah, just down to four now, too. It looks like I thought it looked like we had five down at the start, but 
it looks like just the two OG teams, Salina and Defiance, out there. So one of the OG teams not um, not participating. But, you know, it's the 4 by 4 It's the main event. It's always an exciting race. And, you know, we talked about how difficult running the 400 is and just the grueling pace that that race can be. So they thought, you know what? Why not make four girls run it back to back to back to back to finish the, finish the meets? Well, like think about how many times the, the meet just accelerates in excitement. Now, today, our crowd is down a little bit. Clearly, the weather could have an impact on that. But like you said, it's the pinnacle. I mean, a lot of people just live for this race. Me having run it in my high school and college career uh, can just say, I just love this race. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, it, it really is, because honestly, what it shows, too, it shows the depth of your team. When you can put together together a competitive four by four team and you have these girls and guys that come out and they can run this race and they can keep it close and competitive and you know when you're going to get to that final uh, leg and you're going to have that anchor uh, especially on uh, meets where the scores might be close you know um, if you if you're lucky enough to be at a meet that comes down to who wins the four by four there's just nothing like it yeah, I want to take a moment to notice who we have here with OG in their A and B. We take a look at the lineup of the runners. We've got Olivia Fenbert, Corinne Clausen, Avery Fox, and Alexa Fortman in A, Rose Turnwald, Madeline Hovis, Lily Hasselman, and Anna Buttlemeyer in B. That's two very solid relays. We hear these names over and over again. These are great runners for these schools. It, it really is. And, you know, and the other thing, too, when you talk about OG and a lot of other schools as well, um, it's not just – uh, Ottawa Glandorf, but there's a lot of familiar names if you follow um, sports in this area closely, no matter what the season is. You know, when you just went through the list for Ottawa Glandorf, you know, one that jumped out, Lily, Lily Hazelman, you know, she had a tremendous soccer and basketball player for Ottawa Glandorf, Alexa Fortman, and um, I believe I saw Corinne in here as well. Mm -hmm. yep. You know, girls that play a lot of other sports for Ottawa Glandorf, and not just play, but excel, and I think that just shows the depth of teams and you know, I, you know, there's we can get into a, a lot of talk about specializing in sports and all sorts of other things, but I think that shows you too um, why it, it why it helps to be able to do multiple sports. Why coming out here and competing in track and, and doing other sports other than maybe just specializing in one is so important and vital to the growth of these athletes. All right, these athletes are making the way around. This is your third runner in this race. We're getting ready for our anchors. We've got Alexa Fortman will be taking that uh, taking that baton first. The A team for OG is in the lead. The B team for OG is second place, not that far behind. Then we've got Defiance in third and Salina in fourth. Here we are in the girls' 4x400 meter relay. A nice race for first, but... Ottawa Glendorf A going to pull away from Ottawa Glendorf B. Defiance going to try to hold off Salina here on this final lap. It's always fun to watch Alexa Fortman's form as she is making her way down the straightaway. Arms pumping, legs moving, strong stride. Uh, we talked earlier about the fact that she's run every race today, uh, with the exception of the, the first relay, just by herself. And she's doing the same thing again, but puts everything into every race that she's got. Loves her teammates as well, so I know she's really happy that OG is in second place right now, too. Yeah, and one of the things that really stood out for me during the interview that you had with her was when she was talking about her race, she was saying, oh, I have one lap left. You know, you talk to a lot of other runners, they break down their day by how many meters they have to run. Oh, I got a 400 meter left, I got a 200 meter left. For her, it's one lap at a time. And that can give you a whole other mentality, and I think that's what talks to why she's so successful. And... That's a first place finish for Ottawa Glandorf A in the 4 by 400 meter relay. Ottawa Glandorf B is making their way into second place. Defiance will finish in third place in this heat. And Salina A with your anchor of Allison Schwederman will finish fourth in this race. Event 24, the boys 4 by 400 meter relay. And this is our final event in the Salina Invitational, which has been sponsored by, presented by Wabash Mutual Telephone phone, a proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. Well, there's been a lot of switching around here because some teams are leaving. The weather has had an impact on things. But here's who we have running in this final race of the day. In lane one, it's Salina. Lane two, it's Kenton. Lane three, Ottawa Glandorf. Lane four is open. Lane five, it's Salina. And lane six is Defiance. 
Yeah, the Cater in New Haven looks like um, last couple of races we've kind of noticed we haven't seen them here. We think you know maybe they just the weather had finally gotten enough. They got a long drive ahead of them with in this wind going back to Indiana. So it looks like Salina might have taken their B team um, that was supposed to be in an earlier heat and moved them here to this final heat. Um, so we get a chance to see both Salina teams here. But Kenton right now doing a nice job holding off Ottawa Glandorf as they come around here for this first exchange. We've got Colby Quay as our leadoff here. He is in the slight lead, but that is being challenged by Mason Vogt of Ottawa Glandorf as they get ready to hand off. Vote will hand off to Isaac Mackey, and Kenton's Ty Coombs is your second runner. So we still have a little bit of a stagger going on, but they're going to break that here as they come around and, and they get this first 100-meter mark after the curve. Ottawa Glandorf is going to have about a 5-meter lead. Kenton right behind him. Salina. And the Defiance on the outside, trying to come quick and close that gap a little bit. We'll see if maybe getting that rid of that stagger will help them maybe reel in Salina a little bit. You can see there on the back straightaway, OG still with the lead. But Kenton is challenging right now as they get ready to go to that third turn. Coming into this heat, OG did have the hop seed time with a 341 flat. 346.11, the second top seed time is Kenton. So Kenton, as they take that lead over, Kenton has actually ran a little bit further because they stayed in that second lane the entire lap before finally cutting over here in this final 100 as they open up a pretty good lead. So we'll see if Ottawa Glandorf can catch them. Meanwhile, Salina trying to move themselves into second. We got Ty Rosengarten for OG in that third spot here, according to what we have on our uh, heat sheet. Uh, Kenton's got Carson DeLong running right now, and Salina, as you mentioned, is challenging and trying to get into that second place spot. That's Trey Hiley in the third spot position. Well, and how about Rosengarten, too? Just getting done running that 3,200 meter run not that long ago, back here in this 4x4, trying to hold off a hard charting Salina team. As we close to the end of this meet, we do again want to remind you that we are in the process of springing to life with WSN and TV44. Our final spring funding campaign is underway now. Please partner with us by giving a financial donation in any amount. Our campaign goal is $50,000, and we are at 89% of our goal. Donate online at WTLW.com forward slash donate. And the anchors have the batons. Dane Dooling from Ottawa Glandorf had a nice open exchange that time, trying to reel in Kenton, seeing if he can't get first place. But right now, it looks like Kenton doing a nice job trying to hold him off. We'll see how they handle this wind here in the last 50 meters of the back stretch. Aiden Wood is your anchor for Kenton. Dane Dooling for Ottawa Glandorf. Salinas Luke Lazarich is your anchor currently in third place. So Dooling was able to make up a lot of that ground. He is right on. Uh, Kenton's, the Kenton runner's shoulder is Aiden Wood, not able to hold him off. Dueling's going to go around Wood as Dueling looks like he's going to be able to do this, but Aiden Wood trying to stay close. Hard charging all the way down. Dane Dueling not slowing up, and he's going to take home first place as Kenton ends up in second. And he falls over and goes to the ground at the end there, giving everything that he possibly had in that race. Here comes Defiance, their runner, Luke Westfall, finishing it up for them. And they will finish in the fourth place spot. Still waiting on Salina here as Salina's B relay makes their way in as well. Wrapping things up here at the Salina Invitational. Our track Invitational has been presented by Wabash Mutual Telephone, proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. Well, the crowd is leaving. They are taking no uh, rest time here. They are ready to get into some warmer conditions, and we're going to do the same for Nate Garlock, Jacob O'Neill, Kelsey Beamer, and our great editor, Zach Keith. I'm Jennifer Beck. I want to say thank you so much for watching the Salina Track Invitational right here on WOSN.